All right. Good morning, guys. Welcome to my Monday morning rant for the 12th of April, 2021. That was a really slow week for me. I don't know about you guys, but fuck, it just feels like it's been like two weeks since my last rant. Um, everything kind of fell apart for me last week. I um, didn't have too much planned, as usual, but um, I had a shoot with Abby and I was... Um, contemplating on two things on uh last weekend one being uh, my cousin jess had her 30th out uh in wollongong it was like a, i think some sort of like um concert out there or some sort of gig out there and um abby as well so abby um yeah abby had uh, her birthday party and she she lives pretty far out too like near the hawkesbury i think so that's they were both distance things and uh me being me an old man and uh really lazy at the best of times i knew it was going to take a lot of energy for me to get out really far and party and get wasted and somehow figure out how to get back home the next day i mean obviously too far to uber um and even if i crashed out um especially with Abby's place, even if I crashed out there, I, re I reckon I'd be wasted the next morning uh, as well. And I think asking to, to crash out for two nights is probably a bit too much. Um, so yeah, I ended up not going to my cousin's gig and um, I was meant to be shooting with Abby last week, midweek, and she messaged me to let me know that her dog died. Which is like full on because she only just got this dog and uh, quite recently and it's just savage, you know, like if I lost Mia, my God, Mia, I'd be so fucked. So she lost, so she lost her dog and then, and then we were just talking about it some more and it turns out her brother ran over her dog, um, <laughs> which is like, I'm not laughing by the way. Uh, it's just like, it's just so shocking. Um, so yeah, our shoot was obviously postponed and um, I don't know if her party went ahead or not. I hope if it did, she got super fucked up and, you know, in these situations, there's n nothing much more you can do, right? And um, from the sounds of it, it was super traumatic as well. Like she was right there when it happened, blood everywhere and it's just, oh man. Uh, so that was, um, I don't know, all those kind of things just threw me into a bit of a spin last week and you know what it's like like when you have something planned and and then it doesn't go to plan it throws throws things out of whack and um i uh had been looking at this uh new looter shooter computer game that was coming out i've been following it for a year it's called outriders and um and i you know had pretty much decided that i wasn't going to uh spend my um $90 I think it was 90 bucks on it you know especially with how tired I've been lately and you know $90 can buy me almost buy me a, a guitar and that that just that kind of thinking has stopped me from spending money lately on um, computer games and shit like that and whatever else and um, just uh, not shooting with Abby gave me some free time and I started thinking about buying this fucking game and I hate the game. It just looks disgusting. The typography is bad. The user interface is ugly. The graphics are ugly. But at the same time, the looter shooter genre is just my favorite genre. And I'm a sucker for it. I'm a sucker for um, putting the work in and grinding these kind of games where you're incrementally just progressing. You're getting slightly more powerful and better loot with every hour that you put in and i don't know what that is i think it's it's maybe the similar feeling that i get from when i start things and put everything into something like when i started in front or when i started jdmst or vw golf or zen garage or um i started playing the guitar or anything it's like whenever you have an opportunity or whenever I have an opportunity to get good at something, I tend to excel. I tend to have that obsessive compulsive nature to get good at shit. And I think 
those looter shooter type games give me a similar feeling they probably set off the same kind of endorphins right and i get that same kind of rush and that same feeling of putting the blood sweat and tears in to get somewhere to get you know to see results um so yeah i have literally played this game for two days straight sleeping badly and I didn't, you know what I really realized last night was that I didn't pick up the guitar for two days straight. Like for two days when I played this game straight, I um I did not pick up the guitar. And I I felt instant guilt, instant guilt. So like literally late last night, I picked up the guitar um, out of pure guilt. And I'm like, fuck, I just worked so hard on getting my calluses back. There's no way I'm about to fucking lose these calluses, right? So... I picked the guitar up last night and for the first time in weeks, the guitar was out of tune. Like every string was slightly out of tune. And I mean, the weather has gotten super cold over the last couple of days, so that could be it. But I think the reason why the guitar was so out of tune was because I hadn't played it for two days. And it made me just think about things, you know, it's like, Everything that I've been into, um, take cars, for example, like the GTR downstairs, I haven't driven it for five years and it's fucked. And um, even computers, right? If you don't use a computer for a year or two, next thing you know, it just won't start up. Hard drives just won't spin up. And same with my front door. Like I opened the front door the other day and it was like a bit, a bit tight, a bit, almost like a bit rusty. And it's like, shit, man, like I need to fucking get out some more. It's like, it's same thing with the guitar i think it's it's like when you when you love something so much you put so much love into it 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 almost comes to life and it's like these guitars are alive like the wood is the, the neck is smooth and the strings are uh, the strings are perfect they're not rusty and um everything feels right and the guitars feels like an extension it's starting to feel like an extension for me and it's just bizarre when you know, I picked it up just after two days of not playing, and it just it just didn't feel quite right. And turn, you know, chuck the tuner on. Turns out, oh fuck yeah, it's slightly out of tune. Every string was slightly out of tune. Um, I was like, fuck, this thing's alive. And if I don't um, put the love in, um, you have that gap again, and uh, this sort of you need to get back to where you were again. So, um, yeah, that that's my that's my rant for the week. Oh. Um, I, I, I do have something else to say. I'm not sure if I should, I'm not sure if I really want to come out and, and, and talk about this too much right now. Um, uh, I'm, I'm single again. I think I've always been single. Hey, honestly, like since my, since breaking up with, um, Christina, my ex fiance, I've just lived the single life and, um, and I've really enjoyed it too. Right. So zero complaints, but, um, you know, it's so awkward. Like I had to change my Facebook profile uh last week from like in a relationship to single and um i didn't make it public because i'm like fuck this i just don't want to deal with this shit um so i hopped on tinder as you do and it's i think it's funny how tinder works right Not, nothing happens with tinder unless you log on when you log on the application realizes that you've logged on and then it starts putting you back into the mix um so with last week's uh, rant, I copy pasted that shit that I wrote about um, going through depression and and like going through like getting over medication and then like quitting um, quitting nicotine and all that shit. And I just wrote that in my Tinder profile, and I've just it's just been pinging like a motherfucker. Like literally the last week, I've had so many matches, and you know I think it's because. Um, my profile is blunt and honest. Um, and the funny thing is I got a match with a, a, a woman who she just looked fucking familiar to me. She looks really familiar. The more I started scrolling her through her photos, I'm like, fuck, I know this girl. And, um, and I asked her, like, did you go to Sydney Girls High or did you go to College of Fine Arts? Because you look really familiar. And uh, turns out she went to College of Fine Arts. And then I remembered, I remembered where I had seen this girl before. So 
um, I was super into heavy metal, right, uh, in high school and uh, and uni as well. And um, back then, I saw a lot of live bands. Like, I would always be at the very front of the mosh pit. Like, you know, I go to a concert now and I'll sit all the way at the back and be in my little bullshit comfort zone. But, man, when back then, you, I would go, like, literally and touch the front rail. I'd have to get to the front. And it's a fucking war zone in there. You know, I had like steel cap boots because you'd get stepped on, you'd fall over, people have to pick you up. The mosh pit was a really savage place to be. It's like um, the belly of the beast. It is absolutely insane. And you get to see your heroes up close. You get to see the sweat on them, you know? So um, I was super being into uh, the mosh pit when it came to live concerts. And... I remember it being in the mosh pit of uh, the Horton Pavilion and the band was Faith No More. Faith No More are honestly probably one of my favorite bands of all time. And it was the very first CD I ever bought was the Faith No More album. Um, I think I've seen them a couple of times as well. Um, and I've had, I've even got the, a, a CD signed and everything. Like I've met the band and uh man, like I was in this mosh pit and it was savage. And I just remembered seeing a familiar face in there. I remembered seeing this girl. She was like looking back and she was smiling at me and I'm looking at her. I'm smiling at her too. I'm going, holy fuck, this girl's really cute. And I, and I just, I couldn't get to her. Like the mosh pit was so savage that I could not get to her. We, there was at least maybe like 10, 10, 10 rows of moshes between us. And I was like trying to make out her face every now and then. And, you know, it's dark in there and it's loud and it's fucking frantic. And I just remember, remembered I tried. I tried to get closer to her and, uh, and I couldn't. And um, then I, uh, it, whatever, that just, that was that. And then I remembered um, really vague. This is all really vague, by the way, because this would have been like late 90s. And then I remembered her meeting her boyfriend at some stage is like this dude with really long hair like full-on metal dude and it was totally whack because when i met him he's like yeah i i've i remember you seeing you i saw you in the mosh pit trying to pick up my girl or trying to get close to my girl and i'm like holy shit it's just so weird so anyway uh <laughs> super embarrassing and super weird and yeah it turns out that's the girl um she went to Kofa she was uh and and we've identified that she was at the Faith No More at the Horton Pavilion in the 90s <laughs> so we're chatting um I don't know if anything's gonna come of it I just thought it was really strange that uh <laughs> it's just a strange situation. <laughs> anyway, uh, the sun is up and my coffee is getting cold. So, guys, I'm going to keep it short. Um, I hope everyone has a good week. I'm literally going to finish my coffee and hop straight back onto computer games. Hey, like, I think this week's going to be a wipeout as well. Um, and, hey, you know, so be it. Uh, <laughs> I shall um, catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one. See you.